Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Devotions this Thursday morning, last one for the week. And so being the last one for the week, I just want to encourage you all to uh, be in prayer for your services coming this weekend uh, and whatever else that you, you're planning to do church-wise, family-wise, be in prayer about that and uh, pray that God bless you on Sunday as you gather together. Sister Carol, good morning. Um, and uh, if you're doing any outreach on the weekend, then may God bless you for that and may God use you in a great way. So uh, thank you for joining all week. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us. Of course, we finished with the Psalms of Ascent. They're done. And uh, I was going to say, never to be revisited. But you know what? You're going to read through the Psalms. And I pray that as you read through those Psalms of Ascent, that God will remind you perhaps a little of what we spoke about as you go through that. Well, anyway, let's take our Bible this morning and turn to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter this morning, chapter 1. 2 Peter, chapter 1. You're a stirrer. You're a stirrer. Sister Judy, not you personally, but you're a stirrer. Have you ever heard those words? Perhaps you've had those words said about you. You're a stirrer. Pat, good morning. Uh, I have it said about me quite often. Uh, stirring up, stirring up people, you know, you just get around and you get that big spoon out and you stir things up a little bit and you get people worked up. Brothers to their sisters are stirrers, right? They just stir their sisters up. I know when I was growing up, I uh, would stir my sister no end and uh, that's sibling, sibling rivalry, all that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I've, I've been known to be a stirrer and perhaps you've been known to be a stirrer as well. The thing about stirring is that when you stir somebody up, it provokes to an action. It provokes to an action. It actually brings about a change in that person, right? Now, I'm I'm not talking about a negative sense so much, but it does happen in the negative when people just stir and stir and stir and bang, people people just respond, don't they? They react to the stirring. And that's not a bad thing when it comes to the spiritual life. And I want you to have a look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse number 12. He says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up. There it is. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, meaning his body is going to die, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Peter was a stirrer. Now, in chapter 3, in verse number 1, he says the same thing. He says, This second epistle, beloved, I write unto you, both in which I stir up your pure minds. Lindsay, good morning. Peter was a stirrer. Don't you? Lo- I love stirring people up in a good sense. You know what I mean. And I love stirring people up when it comes to a spiritual meaning as well. And the whole thing about stirring up, you know, uh, stirring up means it, it takes. It means that when something has settled and you stir it up and it gets it all moving again and working and all that sort of stuff. It's like apple cider vinegar. I don't know if you have apple cider vinegar, you know, the good stuff, the one with what they call the mother in it. And if if overnight, all the stuff settles and you've got to shake it up and swirl it and stir it and it gets all the particles moving all through and all that. So that's that's stirring up. That is the picture of what uh, Peter is talking about. And Christians need to be stirred up because Christians often become settled and complacent and need to be provoked to action. All right, they need to be stirred up. And this is what Peter is saying. And I tell you, this coming Sunday, all around this country, it ought to be men getting in the pulpit and stirring up God's people. Joy, good morning. Stirring up God's people, getting them provoking in, provoked into action, provoked into change. This is what Peter is saying. I want you to, uh, I'm going to go to Zephaniah. Just, you might want to just listen to this Zephaniah in the Old Testament. I'll give you a little bit of a, an illustration of this from the scriptures. It uses a funny word and I'll explain what it means. Now, Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12 says this, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees. Interesting word, settled on their lees. 
that say in their heart, the Lord will not do, uh, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Verse 14, the great day of the Lord is near. Uh, it is near and hasteneth great, even violence. And he goes on and talks about this great day of the Lord that is coming. But he uses that term that God's going to punish the men that are settled on their lees. Brother John, good morning. What does that mean, to settle on their means? It means when, again, when you look at the sediment at the bottom of a, of a liquid like apple cider vinegar or something else, and that settlement has settled down there, and, it, and you can see it there, and, and it's just at ease. It's undisturbed. And this is what God is saying in Zephaniah is that the men are undisturbed. They're, they're complacent. They're at ease. They're not worried about anything. The prophets weren't prophesying truly about the coming day of the Lord, speaking about uh, captivity and all these sorts of things. They were settled on their lease. And the job of the prophets was to go in there and stir up God's people, provoking them to action, getting them getting them disturbed in a good sense about what's taking place. Now, what is taking place in Zephaniah's day can also be likened a little bit to what is taking place. So there's so many believers out there that are just undisturbed. They're settled and they're just, you know, they're at ease. And Amos says in Amos chapter 6 and verse number 1, Woe unto them that be at ease in Zion. And I think there are a lot of Christians that are just sitting at ease today. They're just complacent about things. They're just, they're just undisturbed about whatever. And, and, and they just, you know, they're just going by in life. You know what I mean? Well, I pray that this Sunday that your pastor gets a big stirring stick out and stirs you up, stirs you up in a big way. And so therefore, the lees were the dregs, was the settlement. And he says, you're settled on your lees. It's just, it's just, and then you get that apple cider vinegar and you shake it up and it gets all stirred up again. And that's what God is saying. He wants his people stirred up, provoked into action, provoked into bringing about change in their life. So let's go back to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Let me give you a couple of things about that about stirring up. Before I go there, remember in, in Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12 is just a great chapter where, where Peter was taken into captivity, right? Peter was put into jail and he's in chains and, and he's in between the soldiers and he's asleep, all right? He's asleep. I tell you what, that could be a great picture of perhaps of the church today, if you know what I mean. It's like you've got the Roman soldiers, you've got the Roman, you've got all the, uh, the, the, the government that are, you know, they've got... They've got the believers in chains, perhaps in captivity, and they're just asleep there. But the angel comes along and the Bible says, smote him in the side, <laughs> stir him up, said, wake up, Peter, put your shoes on. And he's like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And of course, he got up, the chains fell off and bang, off he went, right? But the angel had to come along and stir him up, smote him in the side. Come on, wake up. You know, that's the same with many Christians today, unfortunately. Wake up, you know, when, you, when, when your kids are asleep and they've got to get up to school and you stir them. Come on, wake up, wake up. It's time to get up and go, for, go to school. Many a Christian needs to be stirred up today. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Listen to what Peter says. He said this. He says in verse 12, I will not be negligent. I will not be negligent. Stirring up really shows that the, that the preacher cares for you. All right, stirring, stirring you up shows care. Uh, you know, when you think about being ne negligent, nobody likes to be negligent when it comes to looking after their animals or you don't want to be negligent and looking after your garden and all these sorts of things. You, you, you show care to those things. You look after your animals. You, know, you look after your children, all that. You don't show negligence in that area. You, you want to show care. You want to show responsibility. And so therefore, when Peter says, I'm not going to be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, I'm going to keep reminding you because I care for you. Sometimes Christians get a little bit, a little bit perhaps annoyed, you know, the preacher starts preaching on prayer and it's like, oh, well, I've heard this before. And hey, listen, the older you are in the Lord, 
you know, you're going to hear stuff over and over and over again. The thing that Peter was talking about in 2 Peter, he's talking about verse number three, the divine power that has given us all things. He spoke about the precious promises that have been given to us. He reminded them to add to their faith, virtue, and so on. And, and uh, he tells them also to make, make your election and calling sure. In other words, he's saying this, you better make sure you're saved. Now, he's not trying to cast doubt upon the individual, but he's saying you better, you better make, make sure your calling and election, speaking of their salvation. That's not a bad thing. You better make sure you're saved. Are you saved? Because some, sometimes some Christians act as like, are you saved? You know what I mean? Like, you, you know the Lord? And so therefore, Peter's like, I'm not going to be negligent. I'm going to show some responsibility here, and I'm going to remind you, though you know them, what, notice what he says, though you know them and be established in the present truth. I know you know this, but I'm reminding you. And again, sometimes if you get to the point where you're unteachable, you get a little bit like that. Oh, I know this. I know this. Why are you telling me this again? Because the preacher cares for you and he's reminding you of these things. So when you think about being stirred up, it's, a, it's, a, it's an act of care, all right, because the preacher does not want to be negligent when it comes to reminding you of things, whether it's having your devotions, making sure you spend time with the Lord and in prayer and Bible reading and witnessing and faithfulness in at church attendance and serving the Lord and all these sorts of things, which I look, I've been saved since 1980 and I've heard the same things over and over and over and over again. And now I find myself preaching those things. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Hey, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So stirring up, stirring you up shows care. Secondly, stirring you up is the proper course of action. Notice what he says in verse 13. He says, Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. I think it meet. This is the right thing for me to do this. All right. When it talks about I think it meet, it's like this is the right course of action. This is necessary. This is proper. That's what he's saying. It's necessary. Repet what, what do they say? Uh, repetition is the key to learning. Your kids get it every day in school. You know, every day they hear the same thing, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, maths or whatever it is, they, they hear the same thing over and over again. And as they go up in grade, it's the same thing, but more intense and more of it and, and on and on and on it goes, right? Repetition is the key to learning. So it is necessary. It is the right course of action for you to be stirred up to be provoked, to get shaken up a little bit. And of course, Peter knew about this. I think it's in Luke chapter 22. Jesus says to Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Of course, when you think of that sifting, that shaking, that stirring, that's what, and that's why Peter was so, so cautious and so careful to be mindful to stir up God's people in the days in which he was. And it ought to be the same, whether it's myself or any other preacher, to be mindful to stir up. It's the right course of action to stir you up. And this is the problem. Some people don't like to be shaken up and stirred up and get things moving again. They want to settle on the dregs, right? They want to settle on their lees. They just don't want to be undisturbed. I'm at rest. I'm taking it easy. Don't bother me with this stuff. Well, I'm sorry, but my nature, <laughs> my, my nature is just to stir people up, right? To stir you up. So stirring you up is the proper course of action. Lastly, stirring you up does have a life expectancy. Notice what he says in verse 14, knowing that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle, even, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. What's he talking about? He's talking about his death, right? Uh, you read the end of John chapter, the end of the Gospel of John, and and Jesus tells Peter what, what kind of death he was going to have, and he's and Peter's like, I know, shortly I'm I'm going right. So you you have a especially for you if you're listening and if you're a preacher or whatever, you only have a short window of opportunity to stir up your folks. Uh, whether that's Sunday morning and Sunday night. Let's just say you do your three services a week, your Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. That's just what? 
Let's say that's three hours out of a week. That's all you have. That's the window of opportunity that you have to get stirred up. And let me just say this, church folk. You know, your pastor's not going to be around forever. And I know if he goes, someone else will come along. But Peter was like, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to remind you to stir you up, to stir up your pure mind, though you know these things, because I've only got a short time and I want to make sure that I'm doing what's right. Okay, so you're not going to eat, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. You know, if I die tomorrow or whatever it is, someone else will probably step in, I'm sure. But they may not be as good a stirrer. <laughs> of course, there's always good stirrers around, right? But, you know, it's important to understand that that for your pastor to stir you up, you know, get that spoon out and, and, and mix things around and get it all shaken up and stirred up. You don't want it to settle on the bottom. All right, especially when you're cooking for those that, of you that like to cook, you need to stir the pot every now and again, right? And I tell you, I love to stir the pot every now and again. And uh, I've seen some people provoked to action. I've seen some people get stirred up to the point where they get mad and upset. And it's like, well, if I'm stirring you up according to the scripture and I'm trying to provoke you in a good way, then, you know, I'm not going to be negligent. I'm not going to be negligent to stir you up. I'm going to make sure that we do the right thing here. Amen. So as you as you look forward to Sunday and your preacher gets up there and he preaches and you feel a little bit stirred up and, and, and it's always good to be stirred up. You know, when we, we often think about being stirred up in a good sense. Oh man, it just stirred me up and it got me going. That's a good thing. That's the, that's the purpose of being stirred up to just get you alive and shaked and, and all that sort of stuff. And let's go out and do something for Jesus. I have a good friend of mine, Brother Jack who's often on in the morning, you know, he's so stirred up about evangelism and, and he's just reading stuff about the old time revivalists and and uh, how that they would get the gospel out there. And he's reading that and God is using those voices of the past to stir him up and get him excited about the things of God. You know, folks, you know, the, 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 the difficult the day becomes, the more oppressive the day comes, you know, the nations and all of that. It is imperative for preachers to stir up because it's easy just to become settled. It's easy just to settle on the lees and just to take it easy and just live an undisturbed life. I tell you what, don't come to open door if you don't want an undisturbed life. And I pray that this Sunday you will be stirred up for good when it comes to the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen? All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Thank you for the reminder this morning that it's good to be stirred up. And I pray, Lord, that our souls would be just that, stirred up to action for you. Lead us and guide us. Lord, bless the remainder of our week. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for service on Sunday, meet with us in a great way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate that. Have a great day in the Lord. And for some of you, for Open Door, I'll see you Sunday. Oh, no, I'll see you Saturday for outreach. For those that are coming out, Sunday I'll see you at church. But for the rest of you, I'll see you Monday morning, Lord willing, for devotion. So until then, God bless you and goodbye for now.